Hey, it's JLF with Autobiology Bits, and today we are talking about tattoos. Now, maybe you have a tattoo, maybe you don't, but I guarantee you know somebody with a tattoo. And today we're going to talk specifically about how tattoos actually stay in your body and what makes them so hard to remove. It's going to be a really cool show, and we're going to learn a lot about the immune system. Welcome to Autobiology Bits, the podcast where you can hear real-life biology stories from a quirky maven to help you become an expert on your own biology. If high school biology had been as interesting as this podcast, you might have become a doctor. Introducing Chief Autobiologist, JLF. Hello, everybody, and thank you for turning in to episode two, where we're talking about tattoos today. Now, before I begin, I want to take you into the Wayback Machine to 1992, 1993, about the time that I was a high school senior at Cumberland Valley High School in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, home of the CV Eagles. Woo-hoo. All right, so what was happening? Well, we were all slowly starting to turn 18. And when that happens, you realize that, hey, you can suddenly do things without your parents' permission. And at the top of that list, you got it, tattoos. Yep, really hit my friends kind of hard. Everybody started coming in with these cute little wrist tattoos or ankle tattoos, you know. And uh, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty big deal. And I was completely fascinated by them. See, at the time, I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to go to school for an art degree or a biology degree. And that was basically due to two amazing teachers I had. Uh, the first one, my art teacher, Selby Dowdy, huge shout out to you, Selby. You were just the most amazing art teacher. You made every kid that walked into your classroom feel like they truly could become a world famous artist. And you know what, folks? I got to tell you that I, I, I came from a huge graduating class. We had over 500 kids in our class. And there were so many of us that turned out to be pretty decent artists, but some of us who turned out to be amazing artists. And quick shout out to Eric Lehman here. It was just insane, like how many, how good people were. Anyway, so I do credit that to Selby Dowdy. She was just an amazing teacher. But then I also had this amazing biology teacher, Jean Wingert. He introduced me to the Human Genome Project, and I was hooked. That was like my reason for living for like the next four years. And it was just so weird how tattoos, in my mind, were just the perfect mesh of art and biology, right? And, you know, since then, tattoos have become just so mainstream and such a popular thing to do. I mean, back when I was in high school, tattoo parlors, mm, not the nicest place. Uh, But now they're like these beautiful salons. Um, They have, they're just genuinely cool places to even just hang out. Um, And these tattoo artists are unbelievable. I mean, you can literally get any logo, quote, people's entire portraits, uh, just, you know, put on your human skin. It's just crazy. So what's also become popular? Well, tattoo removal parlors as well. And yeah, tattoos are pretty hard to remove. But why is that? You know, pretty easy to put tattoos in, Mm, not so much to take them out. So it really wasn't until recently that I decided to figure out the mechanics of tattoos. Now, through my medical writing career, I have written about the skin many, many, many times. And I mean, everything from um, acne to rosacea to uh, skin different skin cancers, melanomas, um, surgery, skin surgery, I mean, you name it. So I'm really familiar with skin, but, you know, I never really took the time to figure out, you know, what the mechanics of tattoos were. But then I came across this article and I was blown away. It was astonishing to me. And what I learned was that We as humans until 2018 did not know how tattoos actually stayed in our skin and what made them so hard to remove. I mean, that's really hard to believe, right? And you would think by 2018, we would have figured that out because people have been getting tattoos for thousands of years, right? But we didn't. We did not know how. So let's let's go over how the tattoos work in general, things that we do know. All right, so first tattoo ink is deposited, you know, 
in the derma layer of the skin, which is the second layer, you know, when it flows through the needle, injects into our derma layer. And we knew that, right? Because if it was the first layer, the epidermis, uh, we would never be able to keep tattoos because they would just disappear uh, when we shed the outer layer of our skin cells every month or so. But what we didn't know is that it's not the connective tissue in our dermal layer that holds onto the ink. A study by Baranska and others in 2018 showed that it's actually the cells of our immune system that hold onto the ink. Yep, those cells that are designed to keep you healthy by destroying various bacteria, viruses, and other foreign objects that get into your skin. Yeah, those are the ones responsible for keeping your tattoo there forever. Now, the particular cells we're talking about are called macrophages, and they look like these round cells covered in arm-like projections. And under the microscope, they're kind of scary looking. But what's really amazing is what happens when the macrophages die. When they finally kick the bucket, not only do they release the ink into the surrounding tissue, but a whole bunch of other chemicals that signal for millions of new macrophages to come to the site. And as a result, any available ink floating around, immediately eaten again. It's nearly instantaneous. Yeah, so think Pac-Man. You know, comes along, eats up the ink, sits there for the rest of its life, and then it dies. And then another macrophage comes along, eats up the ink and all the, the debris left over from the dead macrophage. And then that one sits there forever. And then another one comes along and eats it when that one dies, and so on and so forth. So that is what was happening. And like I said, the immune response is amazingly powerful and it's nearly instantaneous especially when the body senses injury or something in your system that's not supposed to be there. So really, you know, healthy people, your body can make an endless supply of these macrophages if it needs to, and it does. So that's amazing, right? I mean, who would have thought? Now, you might be wondering why this was such an aha moment for scientists. We kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but one word, basically, removal. Yep. They could never figure out exactly why tattoos were so hard to remove, but now they knew. So this discovery was super important. Um, and not only because, you know, it helps them understand how to think about developing quicker removal methods, but also because removal in general is a, it's a painful process and it has to re be repeated over and over again. So let's talk about how tattoos are removed. So currently, well, the best way to remove tattoos right now is with a special type of laser called a Q-switched laser. And what happens is, is this laser is quickly pulsed over the tattoo and it delivers a very precise amount of energy that is absorbed by the tattoo pigment. And when it's absorbed, that energy is converted into heat, which breaks the chemical bonds inside the pigment. Um, and then there's also like a mechanical destruction from, you know, the pulse itself. Now, the result is that there's now smaller pigment particles and other debris um, that are back in the tissues, right? And when it's back in the tissues, it is removed via like blood vessels or the lymphatic system. But now we know that before all of it can get removed via, you know, like the lymphatic system, um, a lot of it is eaten up again by these macrophages. So it's not removed. Now, whenever I learn something cool about the human body, I always ask myself, all right, how can I use this information to be healthier? You know, how can I use this information in my own life? How does this apply to me? And so the question I really had is, okay, so we know that now the immune system is involved with tattoos. So can tattoos make your immune function worse or do tattoos help your immune system by, you know, activating it in some way and making it more efficient. And lo and behold, when I started researching that, these, both of these questions have been actually discussed at length and um, there's really not a consensus on them. So at first I came across a whole series of articles about how multiple tattoos increased your immune system function or efficiency. 
And I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And they all revolved around this anthropologist, Christopher Lynn, who was exploring this question. He basically traveled around the world to different places that, you know, commonly did tattoos as, as part of their culture. And he was taking swabs from saliva and testing them for what we call immunoglobulin A or, you know, IgA. And IgA is a type of antibody that's secreted in, you know, mucus, um, saliva, that's in glandular, you know, tissues, and is really kind of the major form of defense that uh, the body has when it's introduced some sort of foreign invader. And he claimed that people who got multiple and successive tattoos had an increasing amounts of IgA in their system. And this was kind of evidence that their immune system was strengthening and that, you know, the first tattoo, you know, wasn't really indicative of it. But the, the more tattoos they got, the higher this IgA levels got. So, I mean, and this was in all kinds of like reputable uh, publications. And then I came across another discussion um, from the website Science Based Medicine, where um, there are several physicians who comment on things that are kind of um, touted in, you know, popular culture, but really have no evidence of, you know, or scientific basis. And, you know, they're basically saying, listen, um, Skin wounds have nothing to do whatsoever with increase in IgA uh, in your salivary glands. There's zero connection there. This is kind of nonsense. doesn't have anything to do with anything. So I'll put those both of those articles in the show notes. You can check them out if you want to. But yeah, so um, there's definitely people who are curious in those questions as well. And the answer is mm, kind of the jury's out on that. So... But what people can agree on is this, right? And people who are not so healthy or they are immune compromised, the idea of a tattoo is worth discussing with your physician first, right? Because infections are always a possibility. And if you're already having trouble with your health, it could be, you know, an added stress that your body just can't handle. And there are all kinds of um, adverse reactions that are known to happen with tattoos. Um, and actually, I'm going to also post a great article by Very Well Health, which is is one of my favorite websites um, for consumers about health because they do a really great job of referencing um, back to publications. And that talks about, you know, tattoos in patients specifically with autoimmune disease. And at the end of the article, there's a really great list of skin conditions that have the potential to be exacerbated by tattoos. So really good there if you are wondering. All right, so let's recap. What have you learned on this episode of Autobiology Bits? Uh, first, we learned that tattoos deposit ink in the dermis, which is the second layer of the skin. Uh, you learned that the first layer of the skin, the epidermis, renews itself roughly every 30 days. Uh, you learned that a macrophage is an immune cell that eats up bacteria, viruses, and other foreign invaders in the body. And Tattoo ink, right? Macrophages eat tattoo ink and then they stay in place for the rest of their lives. And when they die, they're replaced by another macrophage and another and then another and another. And we also learned that tattoo removal by a laser requires several treatments and is a painful process, which is why researchers have been trying to find out how tattoos work in the first place. Now, there are theories that a healthy person may experience a more efficient immune response with each new tattoo, but it's controversial. And we also learned that people who are immunocompromised should probably consult with a doctor before getting a tattoo. All right. That's your bit of biology for today. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to check the show notes if there's anything you want to look up further. And stay tuned for our next episode, which is all about farts. Yep. I've recruited my kids for the next one. So you'll get to hear uh, my kids giggle a little bit and try to help me teach you about why we fart. All right. It's going to be totally fun and a good one for the whole family.
All right. And also, if you have a question for me or a topic that you'd like me to discuss on Autobiology Bits, hit up my website, autobiology.net, and ask a question there. And I'll be sure to let you know I've got it and when your question will be featured on the podcast. All right. Great. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Do you have an autobiology question for JLF? Ask it at autobiology.net. And keep listening to see if your question has been featured. Follow JLF on Twitter and Instagram at autobiology underscore JLF. And remember, anyone can be an autobiologist.